Bow, we should be live now. I'm standing in a T pose, T pose clapping. How about this? That's like a slate in game. Hey, what's up? My name is Matt Workman, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to customize MetaHuman clothing. And for the example, we're going to be using my brand new work brand, Techwear outfits that are available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace today. As you may have noticed, that we have some real-time cloth simulation happening here on my elbows, the straps here, maybe they're harder to see, and on the leg. So if I walk around, I'm not animating any of this cloth down here. It's all just being simulated live. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get this set up so that you can have some free secondary animation in a live video game setting by hitting play, so to speak, or in a movie render queue cinematic context. We're gonna show you how to get that set up using the work brand Techwear Outfits. Let's get right into this video. And that was the take. I'm gonna cut audio here. We're cutting audio. Well, let's cut the scene first, actually. So once you've downloaded the work brand Techwear Outfits, this is going to be our overview map that has all of the different clothing skins all organized into different layouts and how they're designed to be used. And it's going to show some of the different materials and material variation potential here. And the fun part of this set is that the straps on the MetaHumans outfits here are actually dynamic. So if you hit simulate, if you click on the mannequin itself, you can drag it back and forth and see that the physics is actually working on the cloth. So we'll shake these ones. Uh, for the male tall normal, it's only the kind of like straps on the sides, not the waist ones. And our goal in this video is to go over how to make your own material variations, so changing the colors on the outfits, and then, of course, how to assemble the outfits correctly onto the metahuman so that the animations work correctly, and so that we can get the chaos cloth moving. So step one is to configure a metahuman so that they can have all of the different work brand Tekra outfit clothing pieces included in their blueprint. Let's go to the content browser and we're going to go to our metahumans folder here. I have downloaded a male tall normal and female tall normal metahuman uh, from the creator app. And this is one that I've created already, but we're going to make one from scratch. So you're going to take your blueprint of your metahuman and you're going to right click and duplicate it. The name doesn't really matter. You can of course change it to what you want. So this is for all intents and purposes, the exact same thing as a stock metahuman blueprint. Let's go ahead and put the LOD sync over um, at forced LOD. We're just gonna go to zero, which is gonna force the grooms in the high quality and compile that. So we don't have to do anything with the face, but if you look at what's given right now, we have our feet, which are the shoes, which you should pick out the shoes you want because this set doesn't come with shoes. You can use pretty much any of them, even the boots. The boots work really well with it. Um, but we don't really care about the feet slot. We have a slot now for legs that's empty and torso. So the thing about this set, I'm going to put this over here, is that this outfit is made of a bunch of different parts, more parts than the stock uh, blueprint is going to allow. So we're going to make a variation of this outfit. Now, if you look at this, this has a, a t-shirt, then a jacket, and then pants, and then straps. And not only that, these are separate straps, and on the back, these are separate straps. And this is all designed modularly like this so that you can decide which pieces you want. And you may not want chaos cloth, or maybe you don't want the top straps or the bottom straps, uh, or these. You can take any of these off and use them individually or in different combinations, though it does require some setup if you wanna use all of them. So if we go to the content browser and we look at our uh, skeletal meshes that are available, we're gonna look at the male tall normal. These are the physics assets. You don't have to deal with these ever. They're already preset up for you, but we have pants. Then we have the straps that go on the pants. We have the versions that have chaos cloth on them are applied to them. Then we have a shirt, a jacket, more straps, straps that have chaos cloth, and then some kind of like suspenders. So it's a lot of pieces and there's variations, but I just wanted to kind of, you know, go over what those are. So I'm going to go into here and what we can start with is on the torso, right? So what we would normally do is select torso and let's pick the t-shirt. Uh, in this case, it's going to be kind of like a tank top because we're not really supposed to see in here. 
Uh, next, we can go and grab the legs, and that would naturally be these pants. So we'll set that up. And now we are out of slots. Where do we put the rest of the stuff? Well, we have to make new slots. So let's start with the upper body. We're going to duplicate. It's going to be called torso one. Cool. Let's do one more. So we have three torso slots now. So for torso one, we're going to choose the jacket like this. Click it. There it goes. Now you're seeing an issue, but we will fix that in just a second. And then next we're going to do our, um, let's choose these ones. This are, these are the elbow straps that have chaos cloth, which is kind of the fun part of this. And we're going to put that in torso two like this. So we're going to have our shirt, our jacket and our straps. However, they are not aligned yet. We will fix that momentarily. Next, uh, same thing with our legs. So we're going to duplicate this again. We have legs one and duplicate it one more time. So we've added four new slots, essentially clothing slots to this. So leg one, let's go switch this to uh, the suspenders. We're going to just put everything on here. There they are. They're not in the right place yet, but they will be. And then we're going to choose our bottoms type two chaos. So we can have the chaos cloth running as well. And we're going to put that there. So you basically just need a skeletal mesh per or a skeletal mesh component per um, piece of the outfit. That's all. And I just wanted to show the order on how it's designed to go together. So you'll see that things are not synced. And if you were to play an animation on the MetaHuman right now, he would not move with the clothing or the clothing wouldn't follow. So what we have to do is go to the construction script and we need one of these uh, enable master poses per new um, skeletal mesh component that we've added. So we just need four. So I'm gonna copy this a couple times. This is two, three, and four. Making some space here. You can hold control and left click just to move this. It's like slightly faster, maybe. And we're just gonna connect these all together, left clicking. And we just wanna grab all the new components that we've added. So that would be torso one, two, legs one, two. These are the new ones. And uh, you know, make this neat and tidy if you want to, but as long as each one gets plugged in, we are all set. So this is kind of a nasty layout, but should work now. So when we do this, if we hit compile, it's gonna sync all of the clothing to the body is what's happening. And the head's actually doing, doing the same thing plus some other stuff, but uh, as far as what we need to get done, that is it. So we're gonna go to the new one that we made here. That's this version. We'll just drag it out and you'll see it looks pretty much exactly like this, but that is a good thing. So we have configured a MetaHuman with some new slots and we've put together this outfit here, but now let's go through the steps for changing the outfit and then making our own variation. So if we go into the content browser, we're going to go look at the materials. We're going to look at male tall normal and we'll see a lot of materials. It's a little overwhelming at first, especially if you don't understand how it works, but uh, we're going to make variations of this uh, right now. So the way that it's named is basically the name of the skeletal mesh, which is jacket. And then we have an underscore A, underscore B, and an underscore C. So the A is the gray version. B is the color customizable version that has logos. And C is the generic version that doesn't have any logos, but is still color customizable. In this case, what we're gonna do is make a variation of this one. So for all the B4s, we're going to right click and duplicate, which makes a jacket B5. I know it's a lot to kind of take in at first, but that's what we're gonna do. Going back and we're gonna have our pants accessories. So this is the downside of having lots and lots of modularity and customizability is that we have a lot of things to actually fill out and customize, but there we go. So we have all of our new materials there. I'm gonna control shift S to save all, and we're gonna configure this. But first uh, we have to apply those new materials that we made to this right here. So I'm gonna put this uh, just off screen for now, and we're gonna need to go down the list here. We're gonna go to torso and we're gonna change this shirt. We're gonna click on the material and we're gonna find our B5 that we just made. So we're looking for the B5 
of everything. We're gonna go to legs. We're gonna scroll down, bunch of variations I give you, B5. And we're just looking for the B5s and they should show up in order um, because the marketplace makes you name them so that this kind of process isn't so, so bad. We're going into another B5 and another one and another one. And you'll see that we've basically duplicated the yellow version. So that's what it looks like right now. You can obviously go do the same thing to this material and make it yellow. Uh, we're going to go to legs and we're going to go to B5. So we basically have the yellow um, version set up right now, but we're going to go change that color to something else like blue. So now over here is the collection of our new materials. And the main things we're going to want to change are right here, these custom colors. This is all we need to manage. It's just spread out over a couple different things. So let's start with our jacket here and we're going to change custom color B. I don't have a way of naming these for us. Uh, here you just kind of need to click around and try to figure out what's what. So let's go for something a little different. I'm going to go for this kind of like neon green look here. And this is just me. I'm going to round this to 120, maybe 110. I like 110, okay? And uh, what you can do is actually take this and throw it up here. So you don't have to keep typing that in if you find a color that you like. I think maybe the brightness is, is a little high. So bring it down a little bit, 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Something like this is pretty good. And I do want to replace this one. Can you delete this? There it is, into the trash. Our slightly darker one is here now. So if we look at this other custom color here, we can kind of drag it around. We can see that this is the text uh, for this outfit. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it full black. Again, you can change it to be whatever you want. Moving on to the jacket accessories. Um, you'll just kind of have to find out what's what here. We'll drag this around. This is again, the first slot is our text color, which we will leave black. And probably pretty safe is that whatever this is, we could change it to green. So that's gonna be our pockets in this case. Over here, we make this green. I believe that was the strap. So we basically have black on green in this color variation, not very different. Moving to pants uh, on this setup, because these are separate meshes, I believe this is just gonna change the color of the plants, the pants completely. So pretty easy with that one. Pants accessories is going to make up uh, a couple different things it looks like here. Uh, the first one is most likely the text. So that's the text color on the uh, bottom straps here, but we're going to make it our green like this. And finally we have our shirt. So it looks like this one, if we made it green is gonna be the, uh, the main color of the shirt. I kind of liked it darker like this. And then this is going to be the color of the different uh, designs on there. So we'll do something like this, which is very like coordinated. Doesn't always have to be like this. Hit control, save S, and we have made a new variation. That's very bright, but this scene is a little bit kind of overexposed, I would say in general. And we should, if we hit play or simulate in this case, again, we have a lot of meta humans, so this is kind of a laggy at the moment. Uh, if we move him back and forth, you can see that his groom is bouncing all over the place. Um, but also the straps are automatically going to be swinging back and forth. Okay, so we have set up our MetaHuman to have our work brand techwear outfit uh, assembled. It's all synced together and we've even made our own color variation. But what about animation with this? How do you get the Chaos Cloth stuff to work? Well, as we showed before, um, we have two different versions of these straps and these straps. So just to reiterate again, if we go back to our skeletal meshes and we go to male till normal, any of the ones that have the word chaos on the end here, it's not the perfect alphabetical order, but basically this is the version that doesn't have chaos cloth on it. I wouldn't use those. And this is the version that does have chaos cloth uh, preset up for you. So as long as you're using those for female to normal and male, uh, it will automatically work uh, as far as when you hit uh, simulate or play in game, if you're making like a game character out of this, the chaos cloth just works like this. The collisions are set up and it, they're weight painted. Uh, if you know a little bit more about the chaos cloth settings and you don't like how those are moving, you can certainly go change that. Again, don't worry about the performance. It's because he's selected right now. It's, it just kills it. But if it was just regular playing, um, the chaos cloth is pretty light. It's just kind of laggy when it's like selected in the viewport like this. Or if you hover anything, it also kind of lags this, uh, lags it out a bit. 
But what about sequencer? Sequencer is a little bit of a different story here. So having made a couple of uh, little movie renders with this, I want to just give some tips on how that goes. So we're going to go make a new sequence here and I'm going to put it in demo content. You won't have these animations. These are just ones that I've uh, animations I've grabbed to kind of show how this works. These are just retargeted Lyra animations actually. And we're going to say techware chaos one and make a level sequence. We'll grab our metahuman, put them into the old sequencer timeline. We're going to delete the control rigs and I'm going to go to the body and add and say walk. There it is, our only one. So um, let's make this really short. Um, holding shift to snap this here and then we hit the right bracket. Home key, up key, and we're gonna hit space and you'll see that these straps are not actually moving. Okay, cool. So now we're looping, we're playing an animation. So at least the clothing is staying with our metahuman. Everything's working there, but there is no chaos cloth happening. So how do we actually turn that on? Well, the thing is, if you render this out right now, it's actually going to do the simulation correctly, but it's not that fun to not see that. But just so that you know, if you do do a movie render queue right now, it will actually um, simulate. But how do you see it in the viewport is the next question, basically. To do this, uh, there might be another way. This is the only way I know how to do it at the moment, is that if you go to your uh, skeletal mesh that says chaos, these are the ones we're using. I'm gonna open up both, so these two. You'll see that I th this one was already doing it. Um, there might be another way to enable this. I don't know uh, what it is. But what I do to make this work in sequence or in, pre in the preview here is to activate, deactivate, activate, deactivate, uh, saving. And uh, when we go back to the viewport, you can see that they're actually moving already. And then we hit play. So as far as getting a preview, of what your cloth sim is going to look like, that's how you're going to turn that on. Um, it is just a preview though, because it's going to, depending on your settings, start in a different place, move in a different way, but uh, at least it's a preview of what the cloth physics will actually look like. Another tip is here, actually I don't think I have this on. I don't. Let me go enable um, our movie render queue here. I guess I can show that right here. We're going to go to movie render. Movie render queue, if you're doing passes and whatnot for nuke, I don't do that, but but we're gonna go to cinematics movie render queue. So we're gonna submit this one here. And so something important about this is that if you render this using um, any of the anti-aliasing settings that bumps up uh, temporal sample count, that will not work. And let me know in the comments if there is a workflow to to, to fix this but it's the same thing with the hair. So if we override anti-aliasing and we say none, it's going to mean that you're gonna to need to turn this up to eight. And what's gonna happen is for every frame, it's going to basically render eight frames and kind of combine them together more or less. Uh, at least that's my understanding. But if you do that, it's going to simulate the hair and the cloth on each one of those frames and you end up getting insane looking cloth sims and the hair looks really weird too. So if you're going for like super high end rendering uh, using temporal, um, aliasing or however you want to think about this, it actually doesn't work with Chaos Cloth or the grooms. So if you want to make renders at the moment, um, again, to my understanding, we need to just pick one of these ones that does not force this up so your quality isn't as high. Again, in the comments, if you know how to do this in a better way, I am not like the expert on this, but from my testing, this is what I've sorted. We basically can't jump into really high quality motion blur or aliasing or anything like that that relies on temporal samples when it comes to using it in Sequencer. So that wraps it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in trying this out for yourself and testing out the new Workbrand Techwear clothing again, they are available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace and they're gonna work right out of the box with your metahumans for whatever project that you are working on. This is my first time in a little while getting back in the mocap suit doing performance capture. I've been working really hard and try to get my clothing pipeline down and I'm in a pretty good place with it. I do have a lot of tech upgrades I'm still looking to add into my clothing like custom skeletons, custom control rigs, but now's about the time that I'm getting back into mocap, performance capture, VTubing maybe. Pretty exciting. I'll see you on the next video.